I'm good, you? I'm doing good. I'm enjoying that Cali sun right now. Oh my God, it's so cold in Brazil. Is it? They're getting it. Yes, it's, it's, we're almost in winter now, so it's like getting colder, so it's cold. Every time I go to Brazil, it's typically, I mean, I've gone in, in July, I think, uh, no, I typically go like November-ish, December-ish. Mm -hmm. what, 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 yeah. uh, what weather is that for you guys? It's al almost summer, so it's uh, already hot, yeah, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> And my first time out there was with Dudamis, so. So cool. Our yeah. Christmas is at the beach, so it's so different from, like, Very different, American. very different. Yeah, very different. Yeah, that's so yeah. awesome. How, how have you guys, I mean, has it been crazy in your guys' country lately, or what's what's been going on? Yeah, I mean, Brazil now, it's, I think, number three in the whole world that has more cases, and it's growing a lot, so it's kind of bad it's very bad actually so everyone is at quarantine i'm wow. not in Sao. i live in sao paulo but i i moved uh just now for for quarantine to another town smaller town because sao paulo is very very intense right now because it's a huge city we have 27 wow. million people there so it's pretty big so the virus was spreading so fast there um so it's kind of bad right now we're on like the bad part of it you know we wow. just need to do the curve now I'm just having hope that this is going to happen soon uh yeah. but yeah how's it been going from you now are you still doing worship um yeah we've been doing like lives worship like everything is live now right like so live uh, online so at church we we do lives for worship and sometimes um, we do some lives here on Instagram and with other artists too, awesome. just to lead some worship and just to encourage people. But I mean, I just feel like God is, um, he's just showing us what really real worship is. Yeah. And it is like being at the church, of course, with everyone. But I mean, raw worship, you know, in our rooms and just being honest with everything we have right now. So I've just been like very like, um, uh, every day I'm like, God, I just want to like become this worshiper, like yeah. it's really in true and spirit and what it is right now in this time, because it's such a crazy time. So, I mean, we've been doing some stuff live, but mainly in my house. So sometimes I get some friends that live close because we're in like this town that is not that bad. So we can have some friends over and we just do worship together. Awesome. And that's, and I've been loving doing that. Honestly, I've been like, this is church, you know, like, this is the church. I've been feeling so God has been speaking to me about the church of Acts so much. Like, how do they start it with the Holy Spirit and everything? And how their church works so well, because they were all so connected. And so I've just been thinking about the church, really, like, what does it mean? Yeah. And I feel God is, like, just telling me how, like, we kind of lost a little bit of, like, what is really church, you know? Like, just... So good let's just like really understand what is community, what it is to love one another, what it is to be with one another. So it's, yeah. it's been crazy, but really good. I think God is just aligning a lot of stuff, you know, when everyone, yeah. Yeah. It's so good. What, do you what feel that? I do. LA has been crazy. I mean, it's been, I think, I think if I'm honest with you and I've said this on, this is my 21st live that I've done with different leaders. So we've had Todd White, uh, Lou Engle, Chandler Moore, Chris wow. Kiala, just so cool. different people. We just felt like God was doing something unique in their lives. And mm -hmm. so we're super grateful for you to be on with us. Um, I know we haven't had a ton of connection time before, yeah. but um, my wife remembers who you were too. And I, when I shared, you know, you know you've know, let at the sins and mm -hmm. things like that. She's watched. But I, I think I saw you were at the same, right? Yeah, I was. It was I think it was I crazy. saw you passing by. Yeah, I went <laughs> one to two of the stadiums. stadiums so. <laughs> Yeah, it was yeah. it was pretty wild. Yeah, but it's been interesting. I think my first uh, my first two weeks were I was going a little crazy because I was so used to traveling and going and doing and and uh, most of what I've done for ten years has been in public schools. Now every school in America shut down, crazy. so it's 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 like you take a decade. And I think what I wrestled with, which I think a lot of people wrestle with, is either which either God lied and He didn't tell me the truth or it's going to look nothing how I thought it was going to look like. And obviously I know it's mm -hmm. a second one. 
But mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. most people, all these prophets, stadiums, you know, nations, and then wah, quarantine. Right. For me, it doesn't it doesn't show that God has missed it. it. It shows that I think the method in which he wants to do it is just so different. Yeah, totally. I think the same. I just think uh, we were all commissioned to go, go, go. But before we go, we need to be filled. Like I was saying, true. In Acts, like we need to be so filled true. with more of the word, more of the spirit. So, true. so if we want to preach the gospel, we need to have what it so takes. True. Like It's not just words. We need to be filled with him. So I think it's time for us to go home and literally stay in Jerusalem. Like it's saying Acts 1, like he asked the disciples to stay because Jesus needs to go. He's like, I'm going, but I'm sending my spirit. So stay in Jerusalem. Stay in your homes. Don't go anywhere because I want you to be filled. And I just think this is a time that we've been being filled with the spirit and with courage, with hope. And I really think that God is going to do something that is so different from what we really think. And really, if he doesn't and if he not, and if he doesn't, uh, it's just all about loving him, really. And I think yeah. like this year, the word that I got in the beginning of the year uh, from a pastor, I was even watching again this word because we do this conference at Mount, Z at Mount Zion, Zion Church here in Brazil. We uh, seven nights of like just asking God, what are the visions for the year? And most of the, the, the nights were like, God is like, uh, God is going to do amazing things. 2020 alignment. Nah, nah, nah. And I'm like, great, great, great. And then one word was like, it's all about loving him this year. You know, if he does it, if he does what he's, what do you think he's going to do it? If it doesn't, it's all about like, you, are you going to still love him? Are you going to still believe in him? So I just think this has been like a really time of like looking back to him and intimacy and locking in a room and just like being close again, you know, because we are so used to travel, 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 and you get in this mode of traveling yeah. and singing in churches here. We travel every week to different uh, places, different cities, singing in huge churches, and we get used to it, you know, but then you're like, wow. you kind of forget like what it is to be just you and God at home. Like, because we have time with God, of course, but not that much, you know, that you don't have the stages anymore. And, of course, the stages are just a little part of our lives. They're not everything. So really, like, what it is your life? Like, what is your purpose? What it is? Because so that's not the main purpose, you know, and just building a relationship, a life with Jesus. So I think so especially good. for us that are, like, in the church or preaching everywhere, we kind of, like, we don't have that right now. So, yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Was the Send one of your largest places that you've ever led worship at? Yeah, for sure. I led worship at all the three stadiums. So I started, we opened in Brasilia. So 9 a.m. we were there opening. It was crazy because it was raining so bad there. And everyone's like in the rain, so happy. And I'm like, God, what is going to, what this day? What How many were day? there? Was it 30,000? Yeah, 35, 40, something like that. Yeah, the, that stadium was huge, huge. I think one was, was one of the biggest ones. And then we we played for 30 minutes and we, we left to the airport, flew to Sao Paulo. We got there, went to Morumbi, and then we did the afternoon before the rain. Were you there when it rained or no, were you on the other thing? I do. Morumbi was in the super, super nice one. The big one. The, the big I think red I one. I left <laughs> right before it rained. I was at rained. the other thing. I was at Alliance. Yes, Alliance. I at was night. There and then, then we closed. It Oh, yeah, I was there too. But it was amazing at Alliance. We saw so many miracles. Were, were you there with the miracle? Uh, the I think I was there part? when Eduardo was praying. Yeah. Yes. Crazy. Well, what's no, what's was... one miracle that you guys seen in Brazil that, like, stuck out to you? I think um, during the whole day at one of the stadiums at Alliance, they saw a lot of miracles all the time. Like, people were preaching about high schools or – just like going to the nations and people are getting healed all around the stadium. I think a lot of people uh, were like, um, that couldn't walk. were like raising from the wheelchairs wow. and just walking again. I think there was a lot of people there, a lot of blind people seeing again. So it was pretty crazy. God, that day crazy. was, I couldn't, I was like, is this really happening in my country? Like we prayed so much for this. And finally we're seeing like revival 
And it's so crazy because then we went home. So it's all this like, everyone's ready with their shoes. Like, we're going to go to the nations. And like, are wow. you sure? And then God's like, are you sure? Are you ready for this? So it's crazy. Wow. It's really crazy. You know, yeah. it's so wild that I, you know, when I think of Brazil, I think why I was so excited um, to do this live was I, I love Brazil. When I went there the first time, I felt like, man, what, what's going on in America? Like, there's such apathy here. And to be honest, I feel like Corona has positioned, it's humbled America. Our economy's going down the drain. The 50% mm -hmm. of Los Angeles is jobless. Um, wow. You know, I, I've, it, we're, I, I feel like this virus, not that it's in any way caused by God, but God uses everything for the good of those who love him. I feel like this virus has positioned us in a place of humility now to receive a move of God. And when I go to Brazil, I was like, man, there's so much hunger here. No one cares about, you know, what they're going to look like if they're foolish. Yeah. And, you know, when I went with Dudamis for the first time and I did a small little tour to some churches with Dudamis and, and then I did, uh, you know, their Vox, their Vox camp at the, I was there. Yes, I remember it. that. I was so there before crazy. they built all the, the auditorium the area and yeah. the, the cafeteria was the auditorium and yeah. I was with Titus, you know, and, and, so and it was just, it was, it was incredible. And so what, what was it? I know you talked a little bit, but what was it like going from this massive stadium? Like, what would you say was been the biggest thing you've learned from like, man, the massive stadium to my bedroom? What hasn't changed for you? Yeah. You're like, man, it doesn't I matter if I'm leading here right. or if I'm leading here this is a foundational pillar. It doesn't matter if I'm in front of mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands right. or if I'm in front of a screen. I mean, uh, the day I got home from the sin and I sat down on my couch, I just saw three stadiums full of people in my country, people getting healed, people getting um, sent to the nations and all these things, like everyone's so hungry for God. And I was like, all these young people ready to go. And I sat down on my couch and I'm like, what is next? Literally, like, what is next from this? This is so big. This is huge. Wow. And I was just, like, crying. And I was like, God, I'm so thankful. And then Jesus was like, um, but I'm here. I literally just felt his presence. And I'm like, but I'm here now, too. So, good. so I just felt like he was really saying, I didn't even know about Corona, but he was really saying, I'm here in your home. Now, it, this is next. Home, your house, your my presence, my face, you know, like, seek me. My wow. So... I was so just, good because we just get so like in this huge thing of st you get in the stadium and you're like it's so insane like 80,000 people in front of you le like singing yeah. your song and I'm like I was in that stadium seeing you two concert you know and then all the whole stadium was singing my song and I'm like what the heck and I it doesn't make sense but then Jesus is like but actually I'm here too and you know it's just like I'm here by your side in your room and it's so much powerful so I just think like from that day, I was like, I just want to get caught on in these things in conferences and, you know, like build buildings with a lot of people. I just want to really know what's the main thing. And I just felt like that day Jesus was like, I'm here, you know, awesome. I'm by your side. I'm just, I just want to have a relationship with you. It is amazing, but it's not all about that. So, yeah, I think for me and worship really just being it i always say this worship it's not a feeling because it's cool that you go to church and you you like cool songs are playing and you just feel good and you just sing but it's not a feeling it's a choice that we make every day so even at being at home it's more like yes i need to decide today that i'm gonna worship no matter what it's my condition my finances how they look like or i can't go outside i can't do anything i can't see my friends but I'm going to decide because I know that God is good. So I've just been like uh, talking to people about this. Like this is a time that we're going to choose more than ever to worship and to be in the present because worship, it is a choice. It's not just the feeling, but especially so when good. you're like, when you can't, when you can't worship and you're going through really hard times, that's, that's the, like the best worship you can give to God. Like, you know, so, so yeah. awesome. I want to ask you, so were you born in the church? Were you, were you always a Christian or what is your, what is your salvation story? Cause you do, you know, you, people see you now 
-hmm. And they yeah. probably maybe don't know this wild journey. I'm pretty sure you didn't wake right. up one day and just walk into a stadium. <laughs> what was your, like, how did you get saved? Um, crazy. So my parents, they met, they weren't Christians. They started dating and then they got pregnant of me. So then they decided to get married, but they didn't really knew each other. It was crazy because they're like, okay, we, we're pregnant, so we're going to get married. And so it was a really hard relationship because yeah. they didn't really like, they, they're opposite, totally opposite. So they got together and they're like, let's do this family. And so I was born into this family that was like, we don't know what we're doing really. And I remember we moved to Sao Paulo because I was born in a small town uh, in the interior of Sao Paulo. And then they were like, let's move to Sao Paulo. And they moved there. And there was one of our neighbors, uh, they were doing home groups there and they invited my parents and my parents came accepted Jesus I was like around like three or four years old and they started going to church it's crazy because um literally I always say like you never know when you invite someone what are the fruits they're going to come from yeah. that you know so they just started going because we lived in this building and they lived on the second floor we lived on the 10th and they were just like inviting everyone just come just come we're gonna do prayer prayer time in our house so just come so my parents went and then they got saved started going to church but we uh we, we i grew up going to this church but it was very different from what i'm used to today it was just very controlling and mm. Um, yeah, it was a very hard journey because we were there for like 15 years, but it was very like, um, our pastors were literally our gods. Like we worshiped them, you know, like it was really kind of like messed up. Yeah. So we grew up really, I was very confused because I loved worship. I was like, I love wor leading worship, but I was, I never had like my parent, my, 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 um, my pastors were never like, oh, yeah, you should lead worship. You're good. They were always like, you're so bad. You can't do it. Like, Crazy. I grew up like that, thinking I was so bad. But still, I'm like, you know, I like worship. Why not? But I, I totally, like, gave up on that for years because I be believed that wow. I was bad, that I couldn't do it. So for years, I did not let worship, and I was just not into it. Um, and I remember when one day I was 17, and my parents were like, um, we found out some stuff about the church. We're going to like, like we're going to move to another church or try to find a church. And it was right when I uh, got accepted at college. So I left church and my, I was uh, studying in a Christian school too. It was part of my, my church. So I left everything I knew, the bubble, the Christian bubble. And I went to college and I was like, oh my gosh, this is real world. I didn't know anything about the real world. I didn't wow. have a church. I didn't have pastors. I didn't have a group at the college. So it was a time of just like, oh my God, like what is like, I just learned 15 years about church, but it was so messed up in my head too. Um, I didn't really knew what was like a really relationship with the Lord. So, and I got to college, I was like, it's crazy college, so crazy. And I was doing communications, everyone is so like, oh, into everything. So um, it was a really interesting time that I was like, or I go to the Lord or like I just run away and I'm like, I live my life at college and stuff. So I was just searching for God in a lot of things. I was like, is like Christianity really uh, what it is like God you know because I was so confused because I saw my pastors doing really bad stuff and I'm like well maybe like this is not God maybe God is another religion and I was just really confused and college was not helping me <laughs> and I remember one of my friends um, from college invited me to go she was like oh I started going to a Baptist church you want to come with me and I started going to this church and they needed a worship leader and I'm like well I used to sing when I was a kid maybe I can sing so I just started singing for them and in one of their camps their leaders invited Tail to come to preach wow Crazy. yeah and I remember Tail came uh, and he was like well guys I got invited to come to this retreat long time again ago but I just feel the Holy Spirit wants to do something. So I'm not going to preach anything from the Bible. And like, because it was a Baptist church, a lot of people got so offended. Yeah. Stand up, And they were like, okay, bye. I'm leaving. I'm not watching this. But I was in the worship team. Dang. So I was like, well, I need to stay. And I got like wrecked that night. I was there. Junior was there. Junior was part of that church too. Junior, it was the first time that Junior saw a tell. 
It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then we, everyone that stayed there, we got wrecked. It was insane. And then we, uh, after the service, Tell came to me and he's like, I have a word for you. Uh, and I, mi I missed the Holy Spirit so much. I was like, this is so amazing. And then I started visiting uh, Dunamis services. This was like 10 years ago. And then I started wild. serving while serving for them, serving them at the anything they needed because it was the beginning. So there was so much stuff to do. And and then w when I finished college, I moved to America. I, like I had this dream of being a filmmaker. So I went to New York at the New York Film Academy. I was like all about it. But God was always talking to me about worship. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Is this a really th a real thing? I really just pursued my career. I was always like, I finished college. I did film school, everything. And then when I came back, I worked with TV for five years. And I'm 30. So I have like, people don't, don't know You're that. You're 30. <laughs> yeah, I'm 30. I'll be 30 this year. Ooh, I'm 29. So cool. I can't believe. That's so cool. I know. I look like I'm 40. <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> No, you just have this maturity, you know, that's really good. <laughs> but but then I, I worked for TV for five years. I was not doing worship at all. I was just producing and stuff. And one day God literally was like, hey, you're not bringing the kingdom like to this, to your work. Like, why are you doing that then? And that's when I decided to wow. to leave everything. And like, I was like, I have no purpose to be working on this show. All I was working at on a live show and a travel show. I was never able to go to church. I was not really doing a lot of things for church or dunamis. And then God was like, just take time and to be with me, to grow, to understand who I really am. So and wild. to like this construct all these things you learn all your life. So crazy. So I just leave, left everything and I went to Bethel for three years. I stay there in Reading for three years. <laughs> That's crazy. You're a Californian. <laughs> I am. I love, I love California. Miss that place so much. That's, cra and that's crazy. Crazy. And then there on my third year, I try out for worship and I got in and I'm like, I guess I should do worship. And then when I came back, I was like, oh, I saw you, you were leading worship at Bethel. Do you want to start a band here with us? And I'm like, yeah, why wow. not? Literally, it was just, it's crazy because so it wasn't you were a thing. part of the original Dudamus band. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not from the beginning. I didn't let worship in the beginning. I was just serving. So this was uh, um, 2016 when I started the band. You yeah. know, I have, I have a question because out of everything you said, one thing pops out the most. How did you not grow bitter? Because I see so many people with massive callings. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I, even if I was to recap my life, there were so many unfair moments unjust moments, yeah. things that have happened to me, people that have wounded me, people that have hurt me. Uh, Lou Engle is one of my spiritual fathers and I love what he said. I love this compliment he gives me. He always calls me his unoffendable son. He's like, you are my unoffendable son. Like, I, I can't offend you. And yeah. how have you made it so many years with seeing the ugliness of the church to yeah. now being one of its greatest advocates? And to say, in this process, I didn't let my heart get jaded to where I hated God. I hate, cause I hear that all the time. I hate God, yeah. I hate the church, like, you know, or, or, or I love God, but I don't like the church. Like, how have you yeah. navigated that? You know, what's crazy when I was in school, um, the thing with this church, I was part of, like a lot of people there had a lot of money. There was famous people there. And I remember when my parents lost everything, we had a lot of money and we lost everything. And I was in school, I think I was 13 years old. And I remember my leaders were my teachers too, because the school was part of the church. So it was a Christian school. And they started like uh, telling me I couldn't do anything uh, in the school, that I should try to find another school and that I wasn't able to stay there anymore just because I didn't have money. And a lot of that was, uh, I was starting to believe that I was a failure just because I didn't have finances, just because I didn't have money. My parents were in scene because they didn't have money. And that was a really hard time. But I remember like one of my friend's parents, he's like, I believe in you and your calling. I'm going to pay the school for you. You're not leaving the school. Hey. And it's just like um, remembering moments. Like there's just like specific moments that I always look back and I'm like, 
God literally never failed with me. And like, if people, people will always, they will always going to fail, you know, like they will always going to fail us. They're humans. Like we do that. You know, when you look to your life, you're like, I'm a human. I failed people too. And I know I'm not perfect. I just think like I learn how to look to God and know that it's all about him for him. And sometimes I do get offended. I do get sad. But I know how to like really look to Jesus and say, this is, I know you will never do that to me. Really, it is all about real, like realness with God, you know, just being Super. real in your relationship. Like I, I'm always very real to Jesus. Like if I go to my room and I'm mad, I'm like, God, honestly, this is not fair. What this leader told me what this, it's not fair, but would you do that? And his response is always what I I like I get and what leads me, you know, to keep going because he, he I know what he would do for me. I know he will never leave me. I know he's my main leader. I don't go to people first. I always go to Jesus first. Awesome. And that's what I'm learning. Like, do you go to your secret place first or you go to people first? Of course, you have to have your leaders. And that's like really you need your leaders in your life to speak uh, in your life. But there's you have to have that place that you know that is so safe for you, you know, that you know that is the real place that you like, you're going to get what God, so what God wants for your life. So sometimes I just, I wanted to leave the church, but I'm like, do I have a word to stay here? Do I have a word to be in this movement? Yes, I do. So I'm not going to leave. Like, what is God saying? So everything yeah. I do, I ask for a word. And if I have a word, I'm going to keep doing. If I don't, then God, what's next, you know, because I know he's going to lead me to the right place. And people are amazing. Um, but sometimes God is, God is like sending us to places that we don't understand and they're not comfortable and people are not always the best. But if he's giving us word to, a word to be there, we better obey because there's a why, you know. Yeah, so I'm just so learning good. to just be obedient, obedient to his voice, even though sometimes not really easy yeah so yeah. good i i have another question for you and i was just thinking about this i think i think you are the first woman i'm doing a live with um out of 21 uh, you're, you're number uh, this is my 21st live out of Amazing. 20 people they've all been men and not on purpose mm -hmm. um but i was just thinking about that i said man i haven't done any interviews with i, I don't think so maybe i have and i just forgot but how, how, what is your view on women and God utilizing women and God empowering women and God working through women. Because I know my wife has had this message of the woman at the well. The first evangelist was a woman. Right. Uh, she went and proclaimed the gospel in the book of John after Jesus encountered her at the well. What yeah. are your views or encouragement for women? Um, and how has that been in Brazil? Is it hard to navigate? Is it still old school in that way? Or what is your view uh, on that? I think now it's such a, a time for a woman in Brazil. We've been... We've seen like so many amazing and powerful women grow and like I like in their identity and I think it's hard because here we um I work with some girls that are like bloggers and artists and stuff yeah. and they're all really into feminism like fe they're all feminists and they're like we're we fight for this and stuff but I'm like if you look at Jesus he was always for the woman. Come he was on. Always for the woman. Doesn't matter the woman. Literally the worst ones. He's like, I'm for you. I believe in you. So I just think we took so long to realize our place in the church. And we were um some, I think man too, they didn't realize our place yeah. and how much they needed us um to speak um and to bring like the word because we really see things so different too like man and woman and we bring something so so special too so i just think now it's such a time for a woman and i just see so many powerful women raising and it's just it's just so in, for me it's just so encouraging to see finally women understanding who they are you know because we're all i don't know i felt like i feel like we always felt less especially in brazil like we can do that we can be that kind of speaker but especially like now even with junia i see like her like tail was always in the front and now she like with the babies and stuff and now she's coming and she's so strong she brings something so unique and special too for dunamis as a movement for the church so i just 
I just think it's a time that we've been seeing and getting inspired by woman, your wife. I was looking at some lives that she did and some stuff and I was like, this is amazing. She did one with Junia. Yeah, it was Junia. Yeah, I was, I was watching that one. Especially. It's so good. Yeah. And just how like how powerful women are, how they like understand God in a different way too. And they have so, so much true. to bring, you know? It's so, so true. true. You know, when I look at what my, one of my favorite verses that I've preached out of for years uh, was in Luke and it's when uh, it's when the women go to the tomb and they find the tomb empty mm -hmm. and they run back mm -hmm. and they tell the, they tell the men, they tell the apostles and the apostles don't believe the women. And I mean, when I look at that scripture, what I gather from the whole chapter in context is the apostles never would have even known Jesus had raised from the dead had it not been for the, the women witnesses. Wow. And I crazy. think, I think women have such a place to witness the gospel You look yeah. at the first evangelist to go out. Again, it was the woman from the well. Mm -hmm. Gnarly story. Five husbands. I think maybe it was five or six <laughs> husbands. And that's who Jesus chooses. Crazy. Crazy. And so, I mean, what would you say to, because we're going to re-air this, re-edit this. What would you say to mm -hmm. encourage a young girl that just feels like, man, I, I don't know. I'm on the borderline of feminism and I'm on the borderline of, of following Jesus, yeah. how would you encourage them to cross over that and, and to trust that if they follow Jesus, it doesn't mean suppression. If they follow right. Jesus, it doesn't mean you have no voice. Like actually true submission is empowerment. So what, what would you say to a young girl? I think I would say, go to your Bible and find and, and meet Jesus that is for you, you know? Um, really because Jesus is so for us women and sometimes we're so in this feminism and stuff and we're like we're so blind to the re reality you know we just think this is it and we're just gonna burn everything we're just gonna say what we think <laughs> we're just gonna do and I'm like this is not gonna change this is not gonna be bring transformation really but when you meet Jesus you're gonna find the real uh freedom that you want that you need the freedom that you think you're going to find in other stuff you're really going to find in jesus so honestly my process with that and every every time i talk to my friends about it i'm like do you know really jesus do you read your bible i'll say like, i will encourage you to really read your bible and to really look to jesus and, and understand who he was you know because he's so for us he's always um Uh, like bringing words of life over women. He's always encouraging women, healing so women. So I just encourage you to really uh, know who Jesus is and really like ask him, like, God, what is, what do you think about me? You know, like uh, one time I was talking to my friends and like, they were like, oh, I just hear this about women. I just always hear this criticism. And, 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 and I'm like, are you asking the right person? Because I don't think you are. And just really like ask God. And if you hear something wrong, go and ask again. Because I know he has so many beautiful things to tell you as a girl, as a woman. And sometimes we need fathers and we don't have it. We need mothers and we don't have it to bring our identity. But there's one father that is ready to give us that. And it's God and Jesus is always ready to, to do that for us. So I would just encourage you to ask God, who you, what do you think about me? What do you think so about good. me? Yeah. So good. Well, I, mean, I love to know where you guys are writing from, too. I love to know what nation you guys are writing from, what city you're writing from. <laughs> and I got one more question that I wanted to ask you. Um, and I just I want to honor your time as well. But I, no, I wanted to know what's, what's been your, like for me, there's been moments that have shaped me like stadiums. I remember when I spoke at the Send in, in Orlando. Big moment for me. I remember when I when I, you know, seen 600 kids in a gym. I remember when I seen, you know, 15,000 on the mall in DC. There's been these really big moments. And those are always the ones that I post about. Snap mm -hmm. a shot, write an Instagram story, do a live. What I never post about is the low moments that shame. Yeah. What's mm -hmm. been one of the lowest moments in your walk with Jesus that you feel comfortable sharing that mm -hmm. has shaped you into who you are? Because when you sing, you just don't sing words. You sing right. from conviction. So what low moment in your life put conviction in your heart to believe the very songs that you sing? Um, well, I mean, there's so many ups and downs in life. Sometimes I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> when this is going to end, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Especially us, because we're in front and of 
stadiums and stuff and people are like, oh, I'm so lucky. I wish I was that person. I'm no. like, you don't know the price we pay <laughs> like, to yeah. be there, you know? And I feel like now it's been a really rough time for me. I've been having to decide really intense things for my future and relationships and stuff like that. There, And it's been like, I mean, I always have a lot of ups and downs. That's what I'm saying. Like, you're just not going to lead a whole stadium in worship and go home and be okay with everything. Like, yeah. your family is going to get attacked. Um, pe things yeah. are going to happen, you know. So I'm always like, God, like literally protect me from this, from this. But these are the moments that really shape me. And I was thinking about when I, when I, I wrote um, this song that I sang at the sand, uh, Orlando. Then I sang here at the sand too. But it's just said, it just said, uh, come and show us all your glory. We want to see wow. you, God. Come and fill us, overflowing. We want more of you. And I. It was a really rough time when I was like, I don't, I just ended a relationship. I was like, I don't know what's next for my life. I am going back from California to Brazil. No perspective, no job. I just know one thing. God is calling me for ministry, to serve him, to love him. Wow. And I really had nowhere to go. I had nothing. I was like, I, my dream was actually to stay in America. So I was like, I'm just going to do something, come back, and I'll live in America. It's going to be perfect. And I remember when I got to Brazil, God's like, this is your place. You need to be here. This is your nation. You need to serve your nation. You need to be here. And it was a crazy time for me. I was like, no way. I don't want to be in Brazil. Third world country. I don't like it. And yeah. that's crazy because it was such a hard time for me to really like, I'm going to stay here because I have a word, but I don't like my country. I don't like traffic. I don't like the big city. I don't like this stuff. And just being obedient uh, to God and my songs came. And this were the moments that I'm like, uh, if I don't have my secret place, um, I don't have anything because I, I left uh, an atmosphere in Reading, like church, amazing church, amazing services every week. And I came to Brazil with my church, which is amazing, but it's so different too. And when I got here, I was like, there I was every day in school. Here I was just weekends at the church. And I was like, if I didn't have my secret place there, and the, when I was like actually doing good, when I was doing bad, like everything was going to explode. So I'm always like, if you don't have your secret place when you're good, when you're bad, like wow. <laughs> it's, it's going to be so bad. So I'm like, honestly, just this, this, I think the secret place is the place that really like shaped me. For everything, like moments, I, I, when I lead worship, I'm like, I just want people to see my story with God. You know, I just always say this. I see Enoch as one of the best worship leaders in, in the Bible because no one looks at him and see him because he literally went to heaven. Yeah. So I want people to like look at me and wow. like see my story with God because literally when you read about him, you're like, he was so close to God that God took him and like was like, just wow. come stay with me. He was so closer to God than the things of the earth that God was like, just be with me, you know? So I'm like, I just want to be that person. When I go on stage, the people will see my whole story. They won't just see me there like, oh, that's cool. That's that girl's cool. She's wearing a cool outfit, whatever. No, they're just going to see my story with God and what I lived with him. And it's like my main thing. Like every time I go on stage, I'm like, God, just please like, just everything we go through together, just bring here. I just want people to have freedom through my story, you know? So, so good. Yeah. And I know they are. Yeah, I've been amen. seeing people, even their comments and, and people, people love you. And I think your, your transparency and your rawness, people feel that when you lead. Amen. Amen. So, we see that. <laughs> thank you so much for, for jumping on. What time is it over there? It's uh, 540. Oh, so you begin to have dinner soon. Yes. So good. <laughs> I mean, we eat late here. I don't know if you remember, but we eat around 10 p.m. <laughs> it's the best. Though. What I love is this is what I love in Brazil. You know, a big old meal, a coffee, <laughs> and then maybe an acai. Like, it's the best. Yes, yes. I would get so fat in Brazil if I lived there. <laughs> Man. I've I've already uh, put on some weight in this quarantine. I can't imagine if I was quarantined in Brazil, especially those cheese balls. Was it uh, orange <laughs> queso or? Uh, orange queso, yes. The best. Man, the, I so can just good. eat those things. And you guys have in Brazil, every juice is natural too. Yes, 
So yeah. I'm a juice the thing guy. Here, so. Yeah, the thing here is like when I moved to America, I gained so much weight because the conservants and stuff that you guys use and the food are so different from, we don't use any of that. It was very natural. I mean, now in California, very natural, but some other places, I think in America, they have a lot of- Oh yeah, you go to the um, Midwest, everything's fried. <laughs> fried. And you ain't getting no organic, nothing. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, when are you coming back out here, Cali? I mean, I want so bad. I actually miss it so bad. I was watching videos from California. I was crying. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? I just want to go. But I don't know. We should do something together. Yes, we bring our band and here, we'll do a tour. You have a spot here with us. Please oh, come uh, so much. Come thank over our home, have a meal. And, and we'd For love sure. to do something. Uh, if you're ever out here, please let us know. For sure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. Guys, you guys. Are you guys raising funds or? We just put that? that every single time. It's uh, we've had people ask, "Hey, where can we give?" So we just throw it on there um, on so every cool. single live that we do, and then we've just been um, inviting people. I don't know if it works in in Brazil, but we have a text number that people jump on. So we do mm -hmm. a Monday morning service, um, and so we've just been sharing that with people, and then we're now starting to reach youth obviously virtually uh we really feel like that's a big shift for us of what what would it look like for us to become a number one right. content creators for youth wow. in america especially Thanks. gen z i mean i just see there's such a disconnect with that generation mm -hmm. so um yeah, TikTok yeah. And stuff. TikTokers. yeah TikTok. I, I'm, I, I'm a terrible tiktoker i don't know what to do <laughs> i started just because i'm like oh let's go but it's kind of hard that's yeah, cool. I'm, I feel like you need like full blown production and like you actually have to, like Instagram. You don't have to try. You just no, gotta throw no. a filter on it. TikTok, you actually have to try and practice and rehearse. And, I mean, I got three kids. I don't got time for that. You know. <laughs> I know. Oh. Yes. yes. Oh, so good. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah. We'll thank be you so much. For sure. I look for we'll, we'll look forward to talking to you talking to you again. Yes. I will right, we'll see, see you guys. Bye. Bye.